loading now. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us today at JALT International 2020. Please welcome the two presenters, uh, Jamie Perd Perdon and Quemby Aoki. They will be presenting on teacher efficacy in a self-access lounge. And please go ahead. Hello, I'm Jamie Pordon. I hope you find the following presentation interesting and useful. Hello, I'm Quimby Hoffman Alki, and I'm an instructor at Seike University in Tokyo. Um, thank you for coming to our presentation today. Okay, so today we'd like to talk about our research in a project to improve the self-access conversation lounge, which at our school is called English Chat Time, or ECT. This is the first phase of a tripartite study, courtesy of a grant which we obtained from our university. The project looks at ECT from the perspectives of teachers, students and international exchange students who are trained as teaching assistants or TAs. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has drastically altered the nature of our research. However, today we'll focus on the program's history, the most recent face-to-face -face situation and possible future directions, both face-to-face -face and also online, since we've been forced to move to an online format. We'll also share the results of a survey of the instructors which we conducted in order to understand the teacher's perspectives and get their feedback on their role in ECT. ECT started in 2010 with the goal of providing students with opportunities to practice English speaking skills outside of class. Learner autonomy has been a major curricular goal at Seike reflected in the research of professors, including Dr. Chika Hayashi and in required courses such as Freshers English, which until last year introduced all first year students to self access learning. In addition to ECT, there is an extensive reading corner in the library, a global square lunch and break room, and a wealth of online resources. ECT is part of that larger focus. Sessions are currently 30 minutes long during lunchtime. Until the end of 2019, they were supervised by a full-time instructor, but discussion, games, and other activities were facilitated by two international teaching assistants, TAs. A major effect of the pandemic has been that we are unable to hire TAs because the number of international exchange students has decreased severely. This is an unfortunate challenge. So the way ECT scheduling works is that at the beginning of each semester, teachers are asked to state which days and times they prefer. There are around eight to 10 of us, and our title is Associate Lecturer or Jokin Koshi in Japanese. We are all contracted to teach uh, seven class periods uh, plus one coma or period of ECT. This adds up to six one hour sessions a semester. And until 2016, all sessions were one hour long. In 2017, we began a trial of 30 minute lunchtime sessions. Two 30 minute sessions were equal to a one hour session and most instructors were scheduled with a combination of both the lunchtime shorter sessions and the regular one hour sessions. By 2018 to 19, it was clear that students preferred the lunchtime sessions as we saw from the increase in attendance. For example, most of the students in the previous photo were Quemby students and they had come to the lunchtime session just before, just before Quemby's third period class.
this is my fourth year as ECT coordinator. I volunteered because I felt that it would play to my strengths and experiences having worked at a language school for 17 years before getting into a university teaching. Uh, so my role as ECT coordinator is first of all to interview exchange students that want to be TAs just to check their English ability, their suitability, etc. And by the way, the TAs do get paid for the sessions. Uh, it works out to be about a thousand yen per hour. I also run training sessions for TAs at the start of each semester. If there are any new exchange students coming to Seke, there usually are. I think the maximum number I've had for the training was around 20 students and the minimum was three. And I also schedule full time teachers for the ECT sessions. I ask them for their availability and preferences for days and then I send the schedule to the office member Bath San who is in charge of coordinating the TA schedules, advertising ECT on campus and online and other administrative duties. This spring semester 2020, well because it was clear that we were going to be teaching remotely the assistant director of our department decided to try ECT online. Because there were a lot of other things going on, he decided that it shouldn't be compulsory for teachers. So as a result, only four teachers out of the 10 of us took on the task. Uh, I decided that we should change the name to Zoom chat with teachers to reflect the fact and to make it clear that it would be quite different from the regular ECT sessions. Uh, namely no TAs. So overall the teachers feedback was positive and with comments ranging from good to fine to very different. My own personal opinion is that because there weren't any TAs there was more pressure for me to perform especially as three out of my four sessions were with a single student so there wasn't any downtime. Now, moving on to our initial survey results, 10 instructors responded. As the first graph shows, the majority of teachers have a positive attitude toward ECT, although one person admitted honestly that it depends on the group. Individual personalities and the interaction among those individuals are certainly important and this merits further study. The overall response to ECT sessions is positive. All 10 teachers enjoyed or somewhat enjoyed attending the sessions. And so all the teachers 100% prefer doing six ECT sessions per semester rather than an extra 90 minute class every week probably because the workload and time commitment is substantially less. Graph 4 shows instructors' involvement in ECT sessions. As you can see, there's a range of responses. Some teachers actively participate in discussions, games, and other activities. Some just observe, which probably indicates how well the TAs were doing at running the sessions and how willing students were to speak up and participate actively. A few offer language suggestions and corrections. Uh, it should be noted here that not all TAs speak English as their first language, so it's not uncommon for the TAs to request such help from the teacher or for students to need help understanding the varieties of English spoken by the TAs. We view this variety as an advantage, by the way. Uh, Jamie and I are both so-called native speakers, but as you can hear, our English is quite different.
As I mentioned earlier, it was decided in June, largely due to the assertiveness of one very proactive teacher, to offer an online equivalent in the latter part of the semester, which we decided to call Zoom Chat with teachers to distinguish it from ECT. So four instructors participated in the spring semester and in the fall semester, of course, all instructors will be required to do the sessions since it is in our contracts. So this will likely mean that most of us will be doing it about twice a week throughout the term. In terms of research, this will be a shift from teacher to learning advisor, which is a term commonly used in research on self-access learning. This graph shows instructors' responses to the question, how much structure and guidance would you like to have for online Zoom chat sessions? As you can see, no one wanted a set format. The majority are in favor of having guidelines, such as an online repository of shared recommended activities and discussion topics. A few stated that they would rather manage on their own. So to summarize our results, teachers are generally satisfied with ECT and are happy to do ECT instead of an extra class each week. Uh, the survey generally clarified teachers' expectations and their perceived roles in ECT, which was useful. Teacher involvement in the sessions is largely active with a wide range of teaching styles coming into play even within each session. These different styles should meet the needs of a wide range of students. Um, also, teachers would gen generally like some kind of structure and guidance, probably in the form of an online repository, suggested activities, discussion topics, etc. Quainby uh, will go into a little bit more detail about this later. Moving on to a few definitions and thoughts on the research. An important point to remember is expressed in this quote by Cooker, self-access learning should be truly self-access. At no time should they, the students, be required to do it. This is a strongly stated principle at Seike and we're all told about it when we start working there. ECT is not a class and it has to remain optional. That said, Teachers have always been encouraged to promote it, and we're now looking at ways to con continue promoting it now that we're online. One way that I've done so is to let my students write an extra short reaction paper about their experience of attending ECT. Thus, they don't get points for attending ECT, but they get points for submitting an extra reaction paper. It's one of several ways that my students can um, earn extra points outside of class. During the time I've worked at Seike, I've had a range of responses from students. One student who was very dedicated and attended ECT at least once or twice every week decided to keep an EC journal for the whole semester. One issue for all of us this year was the move to online teaching, which was sudden and unexpected and most of us were completely unprepared. In the fall term, we expect to be better organized because we now have some experience and a better idea of how to use technology to facilitate our students' communication online. As it says on the slide, forewarned is forearmed, and I plan to adopt this as my motto going forward. The university has announced that we're online, at least for the coming fall semester. A few possible future directions for the online format include, firstly, having all teachers contribute to a shared online repository of suggested activities, such as a list of discussion topics, recommended videos, downloadable handouts. We are also considering the possibility of using regular students as facilitators 
for example, students who have a certain level of TOEIC score or students who have lived abroad and speak English fluently. Um, since for now, there are no international exchange students that we can hire as TAs. We are also considering the possibility of networking with other universities. This might be problematic, except for the fact that since we're not on campus, theoretically, people could join Zoom sessions from anywhere. In the interest of encouraging independent learning, finally, we are hoping to use this as an opportunity to introduce students to resources that they can self-access, such as YouTube channels, recommended Netflix shows, or interesting websites. Regarding the online sessions, an interview was conducted with a teacher who was instrumental in getting ZCT up and running online. Her main reason for wanting to start the sessions in the spring semester was to spread the sessions equally over both semesters rather than cramming too many sessions into the fall semester. Three main points came from this interview. Firstly, this teacher promoted or publicised ZCT to the students in her own classes in the spring semester. Then in the fall semester, she again publicised to her students and informed them about the other teachers' sessions. Regarding the content of the sessions, the teacher didn't plan any topics or activities as the sessions were only for 30 minutes and she was happy to let the conversation go wherever it wanted. She encouraged the students to introduce themselves and ask each other questions. The topics that were covered included hometowns, free time activities, exams, upcoming tests and YouTube video games. Finally, this teacher noted that the sessions went well she and the students enjoyed the experience and she looked forward to continuing the ZCT sessions in the fall semester. And for the face-to-face -face sessions, whenever they start up again, a couple of comments suggested having real students for TA training uh, up until now, we were just asking the trainees to act as low-level students. Um, so I think, yeah, that's a really good idea. Compulsory one-time attendance at TA training for all teachers would definitely help teachers to understand their roles and what's expected of them. Ongoing refresher training for TAs would prove useful to remind them of what they're getting paid for. And also more frequent feedback from TAs through a questionnaire would be good. So we'll give that some more thought. And finally, better advertising and more signs around the campus would help direct students to where they want to go. And these are our references. I'd particularly like to recommend the CISAL journal at the bottom of the list. It's an open access journal produced at Kanda University of International Studies, and it focuses exclusively on this research area. Thank you very much. We'll respond to any comments or questions in the chat. I do hope you managed to get something useful out of our little online presentation. Thanks very much. Keep well. Stay safe. Okay, and I'm going to ask everyone quickly just to unmute. And if we can, let's give a round of applause to the presenters. Thank you so much. And to the presenters, I promise that applause is better. Zoom is not set up to take in multiple audio feeds, so it chooses usually only one or two videos to add sound to. <laughs> but now we're going to open up to Q&A. So if you would like to, um, if you would like to ask a question, then you can um, unmute yourself and ask. You can turn on your video, or if your internet is poor, you don't want to be recorded, you can always ask in the chat box. 
And additionally, I'm sending in the chat box right now um, a link to this presentation if you would like to view it later. Yeah. Open it up for some questions. Oh. oh, I have a question if you don't mind. Um, hey. Yes, um, yeah, <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. Um, I, I also kind of manage a, a similar kind of a system or facility at our language learning space at our university here. Um, and we've gone to Zoom and the attendance has just plummeted, really. It's, yeah. it's just almost non-existent. I have to, even with advertising, but in the spring semester, it was, it was so chaotic. And the, the, fresh, the freshman students are the ones that come the most to our, our facility. And they just couldn't get the word. Like usually I have a, a freshman orientation face to face and I, I give my little spiel, like all the great points about coming, but I couldn't do it this time this year. So how, 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 have, how is your um, transition to Zoom with uh, attendance or student reactions? How is that for you all? Um, they are, it depends on the, the, the the the, the, set, the where we are in the semester usually there's a, a peak at the start and then it kind of taper off towards the end sure, the exam sure. final exams to think about but I I think we're we're keeping a record of the attendance um, I think the generally the attendance seems to be better than uh, face to face. Wow. Yes. At the moment, anyway, I mean, we've only, we only started a few weeks ago, so there is a chance that oh, okay. it might taper off. And I think I might just be seeing slight level, lowering of the number of students in the sessions. But I, th I would say we were averaging maybe, I don't know, seven or eight. Seven or eight per session, a day, yeah. You, hmm. Okay. That's, hmm. Quinn, have you got anything else to add? I just wanted to say that often we've got, um, because there are no TAs and because they're trying to schedule this all in, Two teachers will be at each session, and they will. Uh, enough students are there; they'll. We'll go into two breakout rooms, hmm. so that one teacher can be with like four students. Oh, okay. But, you know, I've seen a. I think they're just bored and lonely, and <laughs> so I think it's really it's it's a great resource for them. Oh, good. Yeah, I. I, I think our students have have experienced Zoom fatigue in the spring semester, <laughs> and this teachers have given them more work than they intended or this because it's on an all online environment the students mm -hmm. class load just increased dramatically mm -hmm. they had less time for this kind of voluntary type activity which doesn't affect their grades okay so uh, right one, one yeah, more thing I, that I might want to mention is like uh, the, the the person in charge of promoting it has actually Put a link and tried to to promote it on the the student portal site, and uh, I think that's on the, the first the main page. So when the students uh, go to their own the portal site, that they will see this banner that they can click on, and I think that has been probably an effective way of attracting students. Great. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to maybe later we can talk more. So yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Okay, great. And then with that, uh, there's no more time. So I'm going to stop the recording.